to grab these visual aids that I use in the art lesson today, go to my Facebook page, Art with Allie, and there'll be a document that you can download and use these in your lesson. Hello, CC world, and welcome to our Claude Monet lesson. For this week's materials, you're going to need oil pastels. This week, you could use water soluble oil pastels, you could use regular oil pastels, and you could also use just a regular crayon. You're gonna need some white cardstock, or you could use watercolor paper as well. Watercolor paper will take the paint very well, but it's also a little bit more expensive. And then you're going to need a brush. You could use a foam brush or just a regular paintbrush, and then a pencil so we can write our name on it. So let's get started. We're gonna talk a little bit about Claude Monet, and then we'll get started. So we've talked about Rembrandt, we've talked about Gainsborough, we've talked about Degas, and now we're heading over to Mr. Monet. He was born in France. He lived from 1840 to 1926. And on our artist card here, we have a picture of him. Notice it's a photograph. Photography did come around um, in the early 1800s. As a teenager, he drew caricatures. Caricatures are like quick drawings of people. And he got noticed for that. So when he was 19 years old, he met a group of experimental painters. So they're experimenting with different types and techniques. One of those painters that he met was Degas. Remember, Degas, the dancers. Mr. Monet, as you'll see in some of his works, he loved the outdoors as some of our other artists have, like Mr. Gainsborough, who loved painting outdoors and loved that broccoli, if you remember that bee in there. It was on the back of the artist card. Okay, he loved the outdoors. He loved, and what he, you can see in his work, are short brush strokes. He favored really highlighting the color and the light, like we saw in Degas, and he loved like just the sensation and the feeling in the painting. He loved and valued this over perspective in that classical structure, like some of the artwork that we looked at in cycle one, where it was very symmetrical in the paintings. So these are the things he loved. If you look at his work, it will be blurry up close, but clear from a distance. He loved looking at color and how it does not stay the same. When we look at a flower in the morning versus and the harsh noon sun versus when it's the sunset, the color of the flower is in a sense still the same, but the way that the light is on it completely changes that sensation and the feeling and what colors you use. So he had an exhibition with some of his friends. An exhibition would be when they did get their artwork and paintings together and they put them like in a gallery and exhibit them to show the public. In 1874, they had the exhibition. A critic came and he was like, no way, I do not like this. These are like impressionist, meaning I think their work is incomplete. Well, that term stuck and that is what we call this group of artists are impressionist. And one thing to note about Mr. Monet is that in France, at the same time, there was another painter called Manet. So if you are looking for pictures of Monet and you accidentally type one letter difference, M-O-M-A, then you will get a completely different artist. But they lived around the same time, both from the same country. And to be able to point out the differences in them, Monet, remember we, like we talked about the light and just the feeling and the, his paintings just are happy and he loved the nature. Manet's are a little bit darker. He uses a lot more black in his, and a lot of times there's going to be people in his. So there's just a little tidbit, Monet versus Manet, both French artists of the Impressionist period. So here we have Mr. Claude Monet. Here's his picture, and here is Poppy Field, and it says detail. So remember, when it says detail, that's not showing us the whole image. So let's look at what the whole picture painting he does look like. So now we can see more of that picture that we have another, looks like mother and child walking through this beautiful poppy field. 
And if you zoom in, you're like, yeah, maybe we cannot see the details and these faces, but from if we step back, we can still have that feeling of them having this nice, beautiful stroll on the sun on a very sunny day. Let's look at this one. What is this? Should we do it left, right, this way, upside down? This is another detail, a Japanese bridge, the water lily pond. And when we zoom in, we can see those short brush strokes and it's kind of blurry. We're like, I'm not really sure what's going on in this picture because this is a detail. I cropped this picture, zoomed it in from this one. Now we come out and we can see what's going on. We've got this bridge and we've got these water lilies and look at how this light is playing off of the trees and the water lilies and the water. Another one of his that he's looking at water lilies is this one. This one is later. This one's 1916. This one's 1899 when he painted it. So he's still repeating some of the same subjects, but just playing with them a different way. When I look at this, I think it might be evening time, like dusk. I see like some pink maybe reflecting off the water here in the sky, and it just has a darker feel. Still very happy and beautiful, but you can see where it's a, probably a different time of the day versus this perhaps was like in the morning time when the sun was nice and bright and crisp. So we're going to do our own water lilies. So let's get that paper out. Let's get that pencil and let's write your name on it. And then we're going to flip it over. If you'd like to sign the front of it later, you could do that, but let's do our artwork first and let's see where we should put it so that we don't have to move our water lilies around because our name is on there. So here's some examples of what we're going to be doing. You can use different colors for your flowers. So the first step that we're going to do is we're going to, let me put his examples over here. We're going to choose what color flower we're going to do. And we're gonna put three flowers on. If you would like to try this again at home or um, at another time, you can. We're just, for time's sake, we're doing three. It makes a great composition. So we can look, I see a lot of pinks. I see pinks here, blues. There's lots of different varieties of water, water lilies. So he loved that nature. We're gonna make some smiley faces here. We're gonna do a smiley face here. And you can do, I'm gonna do another one pretty close to it. And then I'll do another one back here. Now there is, if yours aren't exactly in this position, that's okay. Because look, when I did these, I have them more in a triangle. So it is okay. All right, <clears throat> you're gonna need to at least put two colors so we can blend those colors together. So find something that may be similar. So I'm going to color this in short strokes. See that? This isn't up close. When we get up close, it's going to kind of look in a sense blurry like they, like the art critic said, but the feeling of it. All right. And then I have a pink. I'm going to kind of blend in here. And again, a crayon would work as well. Your oil pastels have a little bit more intense color and you don't have to press down quite as hard, but we're doing this crayon resist or watercolor resist. And so it would work as well. And then I think I wanted to put like kind of a little pop of a little color in here. You could do two colors, put a little two-toned yellows. All right, now we've, right now they're just floating in the air. So let's give them their base. Choose two greens. If you've got the 24 pack, then you've got a variety of different greens in there. I think there's a total of four. So you can use one, then you can trade with your neighbor and then fill it in. But let's get two to get some beautiful um, contrast and really show how that light, when light hits it, the color can change. All right, so 
we're going to do kind of like a swirl at the bottom. And it's okay if it overlaps your flower just a little bit, but we're gonna give them these nice lily pads to rest on like so. I'm not filling it in. Then I'm gonna pick up another color and mix that color in as well and fill it in a little bit more. I told my class last week, it's kind of like when you were, like color kind of how you think you might have colored when you were like two. Like this doesn't, this isn't like a very precise, it's just you're just doing these quick strokes. All right, let's put some more lily pads in. All the lily pads in the lake don't have flowers. In fact, probably there's more without flowers than there are with. So let's add a few more. So you see I'm just doing swirls and swirls and then we're gonna come back in and fill it, get our second color green in there. All right, now it's time to do our watercolor wash. This would be a week that you may want to put on a smock or make sure your sleeves are pushed back for sure. All right, so you're gonna need your brush. Since we're doing this whole thing one color, I just chose a foam brush because you can do a quick application of the water, but a regular paintbrush works just as well. Okay, so you're going to want to put about a tablespoon of paint in here to about a half a cup of water. Now I took a regular blue and I put a dab, and I mean just a small dab of black in there to get a little bit deeper color of blue, but you could just do a regular blue and get a little bit lighter. It just depends on what time of day you want your water, water lilies to be. So. Make sure it's really mixed up, and then we're gonna dip our brush in there. I don't wanna have it soaking, so I'm not gonna fling it. I'm just gonna drag it across the top, and I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down so that my hand is not in my wet paint. And we're gonna get right up to our water lilies, like so. I think it's okay to leave some white on the edge I think it kind of looks like there's just more light kind of dancing on the water. So don't feel like you have to get paint over the whole thing. Dip it in. I'm kind of dancing around our water lilies, going over them just a little bit. All right, so I've got my watercolor on here now. I'm gonna go back and I'm going to put a little bit more paint just sitting underneath where my water lilies are. You're gonna need to let it sit for just a little bit or carefully balance it over to another table to dry if you need to move it. So then when it dries, it's gonna be a little bit darker in some areas and kind of give this beautiful water movement. So let me see if I can show you here. You can see where this is a little bit darker. When it dries, the contrast is not gonna be quite as much, but it does give you just a little bit more contrast. Let me show you another one. So here we've got it a little bit darker. So, Mr. Claude Monet in the infamous Water Lilies. Thanks for joining and painting today with us.